good day. In this uh, video, I will be discussing the different communication platforms or communication media, the channels, different channels of communication uh, which we can consider as development communication practitioners. So, um, okay, so uh, this is the question that uh, we will attempt to uh, answer. What are the different communication platforms or uh, uh, channels that uh, we can use as development communication practitioners. If we are con to consider the different senses that we can use uh, in engaging with the different with the content of the communication materials, then we can um, look at three broad groups of communication materials or the channels. So um, one is uh, the printed um, the printed material or the text. Um, during the early um, years of development communication, especially uh, when it was uh, still uh, very much attached to agricultural communication, it is an often, um, it, it, we, we uh, often see or development communication practitioners often consider the printed materials as um, the way to communicate development related messages. So we can see um, pamphlets, we can see um, even comics, uh, uh, comics uh, is a one uh, channel of communication or one medium uh, by which we can communicate. Uh, posters are very much uh, familiar um, with uh, development communication practitioners are very much uh, into the use of posters because uh, you can easily capture or you can easily uh, give a very a meaningful message using a, a poster. The picture with um, short words or phrases, even a call for action, that can be done through a poster and easily uh, can easily be distributed. Um, so that's that's one big classification. And we know we are aware that um, if it is a printed material, um, the the advantage is that uh, the reader, our target reader, our target audience of the communication process can always go back to it. I mean, um, I, I, I may be reading it now and uh, later if I need to refer to it again um, to a certain or validate certain information, then I can always go back to the material that I have. I can keep it. I can um, um, uh, use it as a reference. I can even share it uh, with others who may be needing the same information. Probably one, one um, uh, aspect that we can consider as a disadvantage when it comes to um, um, producing uh, this type of material is the cost. We know that somehow uh, it is costly uh, to produce um, printed materials, especially if they are for mass distribution. So that's the first uh, major um, classification of the kind of communication materials that we can uh, consider. The second is the radio broadcast. Again, uh, this is one medium that was so popular during the early um, years of development communication. Um, again, um, if we, especially if we are talking of the rural areas and um, what communication medium um, is accessible to them. And all we know, we, we all know, uh, also um, the, um, that radio is, um, has become um, a very popular source of information, especially when we are talking of farmers um, in the rural areas, then radio will always be considered by development uh, communication practitioners. But what is, um, what, what is um, the weakness of um, using radio? It is once it is said, once it has been um, aired, then unless you record it, uh, and again, that will take another resource, um, then it's done. You can no longer go back to it. Um, you can no longer replay it um, if you haven't recorded it. We can also look at radio. If, we, if we're um, going to look at the history of how radio uh, was used by development communication practitioners, then we can also go back to the schools on the air and how, it, um, how radio was used. Uh, for education purposes. Uh, so um, if you want to uh, read more about the school on the air, you can Google it and see how radio became so powerful when it comes to 
uh, development-oriented uh, projects, uh, especially education, raising awareness. And we are also aware um, how radio can be used to shape public opinion and even to raise public debates on certain issues because you can really engage your learn your, your listeners you can you can um, evoke some emotions um, depending on the emotion uh, that is uh, being portrayed or um, um, assumed by the radio broadcaster so there, there again um, there is some uh, there are there are some advantages to the use of radio as um, our medium as our channel to deliver development oriented messages but if we want, if we want um, to, to uh, consider the different senses that we can um, engage uh, from our um, audience, so we are now talking of probably uh, the sense of sight um, and the sense of hearing, even reading, uh, because somehow we can even integrate um, some graphics, some text to it. Then we can look at television, uh, we can look at films, and we can look at videos as um, a consideration uh, for uh, the channel of communication for our development-oriented messages. But uh, we also have to consider, uh, again, going back to the first characteristic of development communication materials, um, the, um, that characteristic of being pr pragmatic. Because if we are to consider producing television uh, shows, films or uh, video materials, then there may be um, additional cost involved. What is important to consider now is um, we can, um, we, we have some technologies, we already have available technologies to produce low cost video materials. We can even use our phones, mobile phones, to produce short video clips. And that can also be considered by development communication practitioners if we want to engage our uh, audience um, um, in uh, different um, uh, senses, using different senses. We can give uh, moving images, uh, we can provide uh, voiceover, um, and somehow um, converge the different um, strengths uh, of the various um, uh, channel, like for instance, uh, the graphic, uh, the sound, and uh, the visual. Uh, we can converge them into one communication uh, platform. Um, with the use of uh, internet, there are other ways or there are other platforms which we can consider as development communication practitioner. So one is the social media. And uh, like for instance in the Philippines, we are aware that there are many organizations, development-oriented organizations, who are using social media platforms, Facebook for instance, and um, to uh, um, relay uh, or um, disseminate development-oriented messages. This is also considering the, the um, number, the number, the segment of the population who have Facebook accounts. So if we are targeting that sector of population, uh, then we can also consider social media platforms as a channel of communication for our development-oriented or related messages. Of course, websites, um, something that uh, many organizations uh, have now. And um, again, another platform to uh, communicate um, the message that we want to relate to our target audience. Um, considering uh, the level of ownership or penetration of uh, uh, mobile phone ownership in the Philippines, then mobile phone and sending text messages can also be considered by development communication practitioner. If we want to reach a large segment of the population, then this is something uh, that is also available to us and available to our target um, audience. Plays, concerts are also um, some innovative ways, creative ways, of um, a channel, as a channel of communication for development uh, practitioners. Uh, songs, of course, we know that uh, songs um, are now being used to express um, uh, progressive messages. And um, we, we, we know, and I think many of you can also uh, 
think of uh, several songs uh, which um, have this uh, development values, um, even messages. So values, for instance, again, that's one characteristic of a development communication um, material. We can find them in some of the songs or many songs, if we can say that. And I'm sure right now there are many titles, lines um, that are running in your minds uh, which contain this development uh, oriented values. And of course, exhibits, not just physical exhibits, but even digital exhibits can be con uh, considered um, as a platform, as a communication medium for us development communication practitioners. So again, uh, these are our uh, choices. This is the range of platforms, um, channels, that are available to us, uh, development communication practitioners. But what is important to consider um, in thinking, which one of this uh, should I use as a development communication pra practitioner? Then the first thing that we have to consider is the profile of our target audience. Will they have access to the communication channel that we have in mind? So um, like, if you are you uh, planning to use social media platform, uh, do they even have access to the internet? Are they even, uh, is, is the sector or group that we are targeting, are they even social media users? Are they even Facebook users? So uh, again, the profile of our audience will be a major consideration aside from the resources that we have at our disposal in choosing which of these platforms, which of these channels we will use for our development communication work. So um, that's it for this topic. Uh, thank you very much for um, joining me in this session.